The following is a production of Learfield Sports. Well, a thrilling come-from-behind shootout victory in Minnesota on Friday night for the Wisconsin hockey team, then a 5-2 loss on Saturday. Badgers back home for four straight. The Michigan Wolverines are coming to town. I'm Brian Posick, and we'll have the Badger Hockey Digest coming up. Leonard Scholes up to the blue line. LeBate, toe pulls, looks, left wing, cutting in, Rockwood, backdoor, Bessie, he scores! Tic-tac-toe, Badgers back within one. 8.51 left in the third. Grant Bessie! Here's Zelenik, drop pass Hughes, looking, looking, Soloway scores! Badgers tie it! Oh my goodness! The Badger Hockey Digest is brought to you by Charter Communications. How's that for GLT? Hold on. You sure you got service? Yeah, I've got UF cellular. Okay, here it is. Pretend you're a tree. U.S. Cellular built coverage way out here, so you can search the web in a pinch. I can't believe the tree thing works. What was your backup plan? Tower on you. 4G LTE towers where you don't expect it. National coverage where you most need it. U.S. Cellular. Well, it was fun Friday night at Minnesota, especially at the end when Wisconsin uh, rallied and got two out of three points against the Golden Gophers at Mariucci Arena. Wasn't the start you wanted, certainly, but you had a great goaltending performance from Joel Rumpel on Friday night. And then uh, you rally and you win in a shootout 3-2. to two. That was a, a nice step forward for your club. It was. Uh, we, we've had a, uh, a couple of good steps here in the second half uh, against BU on a Friday night at Michigan Tech. Uh, so we've... Uh, I got an email from a, a former player here, uh, played back in the 60s, early 70s, and he said, you know, you can see the, the sleeping bear waking up once in a while. You just got to keep it awake. Mm -hmm. So I, we're, we're seeing good things, and it was fun on, on Friday night. It was, uh, you know, it was kind of the opposite of what happened the Friday before where we were ahead and got tied and lost in a shootout against BU, Boston University. And this weekend, we come back and find a way to win in, in the shootout. So there was good feelings in the locker room on Friday night uh, against a quality team. And it was all set up by... Joel Rumping, Joel Rumpel, Rumping, mm -hmm. Rumpel Stilskin, <laughs> Joel Rumpel allowing us to get our feet underneath us in that first period. And uh, by him playing well, uh, we got going in the second and third. And as you have said a couple of times since we played, there was a couple of great goals oh. in the third period. And it was it was good experience for our kids. Yeah, it really was. Uh, Grant Bessie and Jed Soloway scoring those two goals in the third period. They were tic-tac-toe plays and fun to watch. Like to see a lot more, obviously. But there were some other great A scoring chances your club had in that game, too. It seemed like you were generating yeah. more as the game went along. Well, after that first period, we settled down. Brad Navin uh, had a great shot on a really good play by Mr. Wagner, Mr. Ustaski. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it, it's coming. It, it's just, again... Um, you know, no matter what our record is and this growth process that we're going through, we're always talking about playing championship hockey. How do we get there? And a championship hockey team or a championship team in any sport has that ability to be consistent. And in our world, you have to be able to play and win back-to-back -back games to play at that championship mm -hmm. level and give yourself a chance. So, you know, we're talking about that. We're pushing our kids to that. I mean, obviously, we're not there yet. Mm -hmm. uh, there are indicators that we are talking about that are showing us that we're moving in the right direction. And, and our meeting yesterday was, in fact, talking about that. And, and we have to keep pushing. As, as disappointed as we were on Saturday, we have to come back, look at video, be honest with ourselves, and then move forward. And that, that was uh, our talk yesterday, our task this week. Yeah, after that uh, win, shootout win on Friday, it was a 5-2 loss on Saturday. Grant Bessie scored both goals on Saturday. He basically had four goals on the weekend. He was one of the better forwards on the ice, wasn't he? He was. Uh, he, he, he was, uh, you know, he's, he's a gifted player. He played strong, and he still wasn't satisfied. He felt that he could have done more. But the fact is, he was one of our better players. And I just it's, I, I find it interesting that uh, being a Minnesota player, he wasn't selected as one of the stars after Friday's game. And, you know, he, he's a good player. He should have been recognized because he was one of the stars of that game. He was. And Joel Rumpel said on Friday or afterwards that it wasn't as hard as it looked. It was easier than it looked. But then he was really tested on Saturday, and they had played better in that 5-2 loss. We'll talk a little bit more about Joel Rumpel and look ahead to Michigan right after this. 
traditional octopus salad. Drizzled with some olive oil and topped with a dash of salt and pepper. It's funny how seeing a clearer picture can lead you to see the bigger one. Get the most HD channels and the fastest internet on the most advanced fiber network. Charter Spectrum, where will it take you? Some call it a miracle. Others call it science. But for those who've needed a kidney transplant like Kelly Crager, they simply call it a new lease on life. For nearly five decades, UW Health and the University of Wisconsin have been national leaders in the field of kidney transplant, providing a new life for recipients and assuring a normal life for living donors. Miracle? Science? Maybe it's a little bit of both. UW Health. Remarkable. Friday night against Minnesota, Joel Rumpel matched his career high with 47 saves and said afterwards it was easier than it looked. On Saturday, he made 45 saves, a little bit more difficult. Minnesota was going to the net more, but explain why Joel thought it was easier than it looked on Friday. He, I will say that he said that the shooting lanes were open. He could see the puck a lot. That makes a difference. Well, they were shooting from distance, and he could see the lanes uh, because our guys were doing, uh, I think it was a combination of things. Um, our guys were blocking out. They were doing a good job in front of them. As you said on Saturday, they one of their ploys, when you're playing against a really good goalie, you go to the net harder. Yeah. And they did that. And uh, we, you, know, you already talked about it. We felt that uh, some of those goals shouldn't have been allowed because of contact with Joel and the net being off because they were crashing the net. But uh, uh, that's why on Friday it was easier because you could see the pocket. He didn't have the traffic. Yeah. There was a fracas uh, late in that game on Saturday that will cost Eddie Whitko both games in this weekend series against Michigan, a hit to the head of uh, Leon Bristet with about a half minute to play. I think a lot of it had to do with the fact it was late in the game. The game was getting out of hand anyway, in my opinion, because of the refereeing. But nevertheless, you use a, lose a pretty good defenseman for a couple no. of games against a good team. No, it, it hurts us, and uh, we don't agree with the, the decision um, on, on many levels. And that's something that you know we'll take up with Steve Prochowski. But, uh, it, uh, it, it does hurt us. Um, so, you know, like every coach says, next man up. Mm -hmm. Cullen Hurley, who has been getting better every week in practice as a young college defenseman, gets an opportunity to play. We're going to have to play really intelligent uh, collectively as units of five in defense pairings, and we'll need Joel to, uh, you know, play well again. But, uh, you know, that's, that's the great thing about competing. You, you have to play, and we'll see who steps up this weekend. All right. The head coach at Michigan, Red Berenson, 800, one win. 801. Can you imagine that, Mike? 801? Is he? he is, is he 70, 73 oh, years 73, old, if I'm not okay. mistaken. 73 years old. He's uh, been he's, there a long time. I'll tell you what. I, I, I uh, As a staff, when we go to the Big Ten meetings, mm -hmm. uh, he is just a, a fun to talk. Like, I go sit right down beside him, mm -hmm. and I pump him full of so many questions about the old days and uh, what training camp was like when there was only six teams. And he played for the St. Louis Blues. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. Montreal Canadiens. Yeah, Canadians oh, he started too, with, the, yeah. with the Canadians, and... Uh, uh, you know, the helmets, the goalie masks, the travel, the, the you know, they, they used to travel in trains and they have bursts. And, and uh, well, he, here's an example. Here yeah. is the fact that he told a story about Gordie Howe, how Gordie Howe got number nine. I, I never heard this story. Well, Gordie Howe wore 17 as a, as a rookie, mm -hmm. had a great year. Mm -hmm. Come back to training camp the next year, he's expecting 17 in a stall. They give him number nine. He said, I don't want nine. I want 17. He says, hey, look, Gordie, if you take nine, you get a better berth in the train. That's how he got number nine. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted 17, but he wanted a better bed when he slept on the train. So so stories like that come up. And and so you sit down and, you, you know, you, you've, got a, you've got a walking encyclopedia yeah. about the history of, of the National Hockey League and college and how that all blended. So he's one of the true greats uh, of, of our game, and it's fun to talk to him. Yeah, Stanley Cup champion and a national championship coach as well. In Michigan, here's a team that's won nine of its last ten. Uh, started the season slowly, now 13-7. and seven but it's the highest scoring team in the country. Dylan Larkin, uh, you can throw in uh, Mott, you can throw in Kopp, you can throw in Nieves, you can go on and on and on. And another young man, too, by the name of Hyman, who's putting up a lot of points. This is a very powerful club. Well, I talked to Robbie Andringa, who watched them play against Minnesota. and they, Minnesota, Michigan beat Minnesota twice at home. He yeah. said, they're down the middle, they are really talented, and that's where you want to be strong. And they got some defensemen that can, that can move. So they got some pieces there. And so they'll be formidable. And, you know, again, 
uh, you know, for our young team to play against a quality team like this, you know, uh, we want to be 1-0 on Friday and 1-0 on Saturday, but we're going to get better because of the level of play, and it's going to draw the best out of our kids. Yeah. Michigan has scored 21 goals in its last three games. It's also given up 14. Goaltending has been an issue. Good luck against the Wolverines. Thanks, Brian. I'm sure that's a Badgers coach, Mike Eves. Wisconsin and Michigan face off Friday night at 8 and then Saturday at 7. Both games on the Badgers Sports Network. Also available Friday on the Big Ten Network and Saturday on the Wisconsin Channel. For Mike Eves, I'm Brian Posick. Thanks for watching the Badger Hockey Digest.